Miles Upshare, a reporter, gets tipped by an anonymous person working for the shady organization of Merkov about their unethical experiments on their patients. As Miles is skeptical about the actual practices of Merkov who cover their act as charitable work, he travels to Mount Massive Asylum, a center point of their operations, witnessing horrid and horrifying scenes, very quickly deciding to leave when hell breaks loose, with him only having survival on mind. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. This game has been suggested to me for a very long time, so it's finally time to go over it. If you want a favorite game of yours to be covered for the next videos as well, make sure to send them to me through Twitter. This video will contain spoilers. With that said, let's begin. A member of press drives down to Mount Massive Asylum with no sign of anyone being present at the security gate. Next to him, he finds a confidential folder accompanied by a camcorder, which entails an anonymous tip about illegal activities being carried out in Mirkov psychiatric systems, with one being the Mount Massive branch, which the tipper was located in. You don't know me. I have to make this quick. I did two weeks of software consult at Merkov Psychiatric Systems facilities in Mount Massive. All sorts of NDAs I am very much breaking. Terrible things happening there. Don't understand it. Don't believe half the things I saw. Doctors talking about dream therapy going too deep. People are being hurt. And Merkov is making money. This anonymous email was sent to Miles Upshare, being the person in the car who is trying to investigate this alarming revelation and collect evidence by using his camcorder. A personal note of Miles reveals the research he carried out before entering the premises. <sighs> Mount Massive Asylum. Shut down in might scandals and government secrecy in 1971. Reopened by Merkov Psychiatric Systems in 2009 under the guise of a charitable organization. Cell phone reception cut off abruptly a mile out. More like a jammer than lost signal. This reveals that Merkov Psychiatric Systems is no stranger to scandals and public distrust. In fact, the reporter, Miles, seems to be a front-runner in wanting the organization to be exposed and collapse for what they truly are. Corrupt, self-identified non-profit organization, while in fact profit is the only thing they care about, while conducting shady business. Right off the bat, a man stands behind the windows observing Miles, but as soon as they realize they have been noticed, they shut the light off and run away from the window. Miles observes armored trucks equipped with sonic weapons as approaching the main door as if they are used to incapacitate certain people. Miles manages to use some scaffolding and enter the building using his night vision and camcorder to navigate through the dark rooms. After some time, Miles finds a confidential folder containing a report on the Project Wallrider, which experiments on patients focusing on dreams and how the organization tries to secure its unethical experiments. Exploring the asylum, Miles finds traces of blood with strange events occurring while the place is empty, as if everyone is hiding. He soon comes across corpses being suspended upside down with their badges indicating they were scientists working for Merkov, who seemingly just perished, with a dying guard wearing tactical gear being impaled telling Miles with his last breaths to run away, and how a certain group of beings labeled as variants committed the murders. <laughs> killed us. You got out. The very. You can't fight them. You have to hide. You can unlock the main doors from security control. Ah. Miles being audibly terrified and gasping for air gets attacked by a large patient who seemingly had experiments done on, looking extremely unusual, who throws him, leading to Miles losing consciousness. 
As Miles regains his consciousness, he's awakened by a priest-like figure who seems to want to expose the asylum for what they are as he approves of Miles' actions after watching his camcorder recordings. Miles, having only one thing on his mind, to find a way to escape, desperately looks around and explores the building. Miles soon finds another report, this time on Walker, a patient who was observed by a doctor called Rudolf Wernicke, with a patient sustaining severe mental deterioration after the experiments, with the patient sustaining severe mental deterioration after the experiments, causing him to inflict self-mutilations and becoming aggressive. He also altered physically, becoming large in size. The patient walker expressed concerns about the flesh around his mouth and nose, which led to him ripping his skin off, exposing his teeth. Therefore, it's quite likely the patient in this report is no other than the violent large person who threw Miles a short while back, leading to him losing his consciousness. These reports reveal how inhumane and immoral the experiments are, which led to the test subjects losing their minds and becoming violent. Miles then crosses paths with several men who seem to have been experimented on, showing signs of mental and physical deterioration, watching a dead channel with blood smears. They survived whatever happened here, with the security guards having been neutralized. Just as Miles grabs a security badge to open the gate, one of the patients attacks him and pins him to the ground, whom he narrowly escapes, showing how unsafe this building is. And Miles is trapped in a building with violent people who have been badly mistreated. A further report written by Helen Granat entails how aware the staff are of the unethical experiments they are carrying out on the patients and the severe impact it had on them. She even indicates that the patients do not have have anyone to investigate their disappearance, indicating that the patients possibly were even abducted or kept in the facilities against their own will. As Miles tries to open the security gate and escape, he observes someone cutting the powers, making the process impossible. Miles decides to restart the generators to open the gates, going to the basements, where he finds another confidential folder entailing sensitive information about why the asylum was previously shut down. Down. In 1954, the asylum was used as a base to carry out a program called MKUltra, which has connection in real life where humans were given drugs and put under other means in order to study mind control. The report explains an experiment where a test subject was mind controlled in a hypnotic state, which could indicate that the new project, Wild Rider, carried out by Merkov is the same program, just having a different name. Finding the generator, the person who shut it off is guarding the place, who Miles evades and manages to turn the generator back on. As Miles heads back to the security room to open the gate, he gets stabbed by a syringe, making him fall asleep. When he sees the culprit was no other than the priest who apologizes to him, saying that there's more to see before leaving. Showing an unseen entity on the surveillance monitors, killing a few armed guards, throwing them around like rag dolls, which the priest calls their Lord Wallrider, encouraging Miles to also follow their gospel and their Lord. Our Lord, the Wallrider, tearing his truth into the unbelievers. The only way out of this place is the truth. Accept the gospel, and all doors will open before. As Miles awakens, he finds himself in a solitary padded room, decorated with crosses all over. Miles writes in his journal that the priest is referred to as Father Martin and that Dr. Rudolf Wernicke is at the center of everything, but that he has been long dead for over 10 years. The priest opens the door for him, witnessing in horror that he's among some of the most violent patients who were kept in padded solitaries. Some men discuss the brutal details of killing Miles, but restrain themselves for, at least now, as they are instructed by Father Martin. This reveals what a powerful man Father Martin is amongst the patients who organized the cult inside the asylum. Maybe if 
Father Martin's man. Maybe. He looks nervous. I would like to kill him. As would I. The preacher asked us not to. It would be impolite. Not here. We give him a running start. There's an idea. And when we kill him, we kill him slow. Such patience. I want his tongue. And liver. They are yours. Another report explains about Father Martin, who in fact was just another patient who found higher calling after his pains were taken from him. Therefore, he thinks he found some higher power and became a priest, where in reality, he is just another deluded patient who was mistreated. After evading two violent patients, Mile observes Chris Walker, the large deformed patient, ripping someone's head clean off, who Miles is severely afraid of. On his way to find a way out, following the blood train left by Father Martin, Miles finds a report about Dr. Rudolf Wernicke. Dr. Wernicke dies at the age of 90 in 2009. He was born in Germany and achieved fame in the mathematic and scientific communities for a paper written with early computing pioneer Alan Turing, a British genius who is said to have created one of the first computers which helped decode secret messages. After a cloudy history with the German war efforts, Dr. Wernicke emigrated to the United States in 1949 with a visa with the State Department. Several decades of government research in Los Alamos eventually led to charitable work for the Merkov Corporation. A statement from the company calls Dr. Wernicke a true humanitarian with a generous spirit, showing how hypocritical and fake they truly are. After some time, Miles catches a glimpse of a cloudy presence in his camera which isn't visible to naked eye. He thinks about what the patients say, that there's a higher power entity called Wall Rider, which makes Miles doubt himself to what if there is a supernatural entity. After traversing through the sewer and escaping to violent maniacs intending to kill Miles, he gets rescued by someone jumping into a dumbwaiter who turns out to be anything but friendly. The stranger restrains Miles to a wheelchair and takes him to a bloodied operating room. After getting two of his fingers cut off by this lunatic, Miles says enough is enough and tries to escape when the crazy doctor leaves. After meeting a tied down test subject, Miles learns that this person who cut his fingers off is called Traeger, a scientist who worked for Mirkov but ultimately suffered the same fate of the patients. However, Traeger being a twisted man, carried on doing gruesome live experiments without any anesthetics on the patients, even when not required to do so, with some of his test subjects being seen begging for mercy while tied down to beds. I'm not a patient. I'm an executive, just like him. Like Trigger. He got the treatment. He's still alive. Still the Zernike's Lakers. He worked too well. They can control it. And you can't control it. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody! If I do, he'll kill you. He's coming now. Trigger! Trigger! After being chased by the psychopathic killer, Miles manages to fend himself with Traeger, meeting his demise in a moving elevator, suffering from a well deserved painful death. Miles then soon comes across a patient who started a fire while waiting to be burned alive, instructing Miles to leave through the kitchen if he wants to live. The patient explains how so many like him were used and tortured by Mirkov, as nobody cared about some so-called crazies, which makes Miles realize that in fact, all of these people were victims who lost their minds after being isolated and feeling used up, being experimented on and feeling alone to the point that some rather burn alive than stay in such a place. You are the you get out of the kitchen. After some time, Miles gets trapped in the outside yard, witnessing Wall Rider, the violent and vicious unseen entity, only observable through the camcorder. Evading this terrifying entity, Miles follows Father Martin in hopes of finding answers and getting out of this place. During a jump on a broken platform, Miles loses his camcorder, including all of the evidence he recorded to expose this evil organization. Even worse, 
He relies on his camcorder to navigate through darkness. Miles is left with no choice but to go down and find his camcorder, putting a pause on his mission to get to Father Martin. After finding his camcorder and escaping some violent patients, Miles gets back on his original mission to find Father Martin with his camcorder having a cracked screen but still functioning. In the theater room, Miles listened to an interview with Dr. Wernicke, who explains why his test subjects in his homeland, Germany, produce different results than the people in the United States. Exit interview recorded December 27th, 1985 in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Clearance Sierra Alpha. Subject, Dr. Rudolf Wernicke, 14866. The theaters are here. Uh, there was no alteration to the footage at all, no trickery? None. In June of 1943, you recorded three instances of spontaneous bleeding. Uh, half a dozen test subjects began to develop brain tumors? Yes. The autopsies revealed that the tumors were pure lead. It killed them? Can you explain why the results could not be reproduced in the United States? I have my theories. My homeland in those years. It's impossible to understand the things we felt, what we believed. The overwhelming fear, ecstatic rage, and English words are insufficient. More than hope. A human mind in that environment is capable of extraordinary things. You're saying the experiment needed proximity to death, to overwhelming madness. Only a test subject who had witnessed enough horror was capable of activating the engine. Do you believe your test subjects achieved something supernatural? No. Do you think that they contacted something supernatural? Nothing is supernatural. Then what was it? You said Project Wallrider was a gateway. A gateway to what? He explains the test subjects had witnessed overwhelming horror to the point of facing death, which activated the morphogenic engine as people in Germany during those times were in midst of war or were the victims of war. Therefore, it explains why the patients in Mount Massif have such brutal experiments carried out on them, having deformities and being mutilated. Dr. Wernicke seemingly wanted to replicate the same environment and obtain the same results, causing unimaginable pain and fear upon his test subjects. Eventually, managing to arrive at Father Martin's church, he witnesses him being crucified, ready to join Wallrider, the unseen entity that they worship. Moments before being set ablaze, while his followers praise his own sacrifice, Father Martin informs Miles that he fixed the elevator and that he can use it to escape. Miles reaches the elevator and goes all the way down, arriving at a secret lab. Through a confidential report by Jennifer Rowland, it's revealed the purpose of the experiments, or at least one of the main ones, was to create a sentient, independent swarm, a smoke-like entity, or in other words, wall rider. Therefore, Wall Rider is not a paranormal and supernatural entity from the unknown, but the result of decades of sinister experiments and studies by a psychopathic mad scientist. Just as Miles progresses further, he's stopped by the swarm or also known as Wall Rider, which makes him run in fear, knowing full well he would end up as minced meat just by observing the mangled corpses around him. As he runs the other way, he's quickly stopped by Chris Walker, the gigantic patient who throws him around. As Walker approaches Miles to finish him off, Wall Rider attacks him, shredding him into pieces with minimum effort, displaying how powerful this lab synthesized sentient creature truly is. Just as Miles tries to shake off the horror he just witnessed and how lucky he was to escape the embrace of death, 
is called over by an old man on the wheelchair who turns out to be no other than Wernicke, the mad scientist who was supposed to be dead a decade ago. He explains that his aim of conducting such horrid experiments was to transform human cells into nanofactories, hence why he misused and tortured the patients to create Wallrider or the Swarm. However, unable to control his product, Wallrider turned against them and went on a killing spree, destroying anyone in its way. Wernicke begs Miles to kill Billy, a link to Wallrider, in order to stop this madness as it could mean the human extinction if it ever gets out of the asylum. A confidential report urges the staff and scientists to avoid even the thought of worshipping the swarm, a lab-created sentient organism, just like how many patients started to and created a sect with Father Martin leading them. This explains the sheer horrifying fact that the swarm is such a misunderstood creature, a far superior synthesized creature to humans, that many staff and even scientists lean towards spiritual and religious beliefs, starting to even consider worshipping it. Going to the lab, he finds Billy, a 23-year-old who looks much older than his age, displaying how horribly he was treated. He's kept in a morphogenic engine life pod, which directly allows the swarm to be alive and roam around. Which means, if Billy is disconnected from the life support, the swarm would meet its end as well. The scene displays how many patients were tried, experimented on, and driven to the point of facing death, but all turned out to be unsuitable, with Billy only being remotely a suitable candidate, which gave rise to Wallrider, causing the collapse of the Murkoff operation. As Miles turns off Billy's life support, an angered Wallrider badly mauls him, leaving him severely injured before disappearing. Miles struggles to walk but uses whatever energy and will he's got left to pull himself together and head for the exit. Just as he reaches the end of a corridor, Dr. Wernicke, accompanied by many armed tactical soldiers, open the door and open fire on Miles in order to get rid of any evidence and continue their work. This reveals how twisted Dr. Wernicke still is, still wanting to continue his work despite it backfiring and killing almost all of his staff and many patients. In a turn of event, just as Miles hits the floor, Wallrider rises from his body and savagely rips everyone apart, with Wernicke in a terrified and shaky voice mentioning that he has become the host, with Wallrider residing within Miles' body to survive. God, Himmer, you have become the host. Jesus, God, what is that thing? What a twist. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to stay tuned by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell, as I'm intending to cover the other Outlast installments. It's been your host, R. Until the next video, have a fantastic day.